Hello everyone, on today's Command vs. DCS, we're going to be taking a look at the Sukhoi 25T. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a scenario here in the uh, Persian Gulf, it's kind of like mid-90s. Uh, we can create like a fake scenario where a bunch of Iranian vessels have been attacking tankers or something like that, especially if you've been reading the news recently. So in this particular case, um, they've gone ahead and given themselves a couple little different types of either patrol boats or, you know, light frigates, things along those lines. They've just left Bender Abbas, and they're kind of making their way kind of into the main shipping lane here. Um, the Russians, of course, are set up here in Oman. Uh, we have Kassab Airport, which, if you've seen it in DCS, it's a bit of a project to get airborne in because it's in such a nice tight valley. At least it's difficult to hit with guided weapons. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and create a mission. Grab these guys real quick. Go ahead and mark these guys as... Call this one Sinkum. Go ahead and set this to a naval strike. Grab my Sukhoi 25Ts. Make sure everything looks good to me. Okay. Let's see, mission doctrine, weapons release authorization. Let's see. I need one round for everything here. I'm going to take my time and make sure everything is set to one round. Because uh, those T's are really big missiles. We're even going to say that it's okay to go for civilians, but of course we're not really targeting civilians here. Uh, surface submarine, use all of them. <laughs> I don't think we're going to bump into something like that. So let me just quickly go over my WRA real quick. Oh, looks pretty much the way I want it to be. Let's go ahead and check my general doctrine here. I'm definitely going to allow strafing. Not that it's a good idea to strafe a boat. It's kind of a bad combination. And let's see here. We want to go ahead and say... um. See here. There we go. We'll do something like that. All right. Let's go ahead and unpause and make one other quick little modification here. And pause. Okay. So what we don't want is our Sukhoi 25Ts to become ripping along at high altitude. You can see right now we're set to 2,000 feet, which actually that's fine with me. <laughs> but one thing I do want to do a little differently, and now we want to see this in DCS as well because it's really cool is we're actually going to add a KH-58 to uh, each one of these groups of Sukhoi 25Ts. Now, KH-58 is an insane cruise missile, basically, that can be used to either attack ground targets or, more specifically, uh, enemy radar targets. So um, we do have this weapon in DCS, and it's really it's a lot of fun to play with if you haven't gotten a shot to do it. So we're looking for the KH-58, and we're looking for the semi-ballistic version. <laughs> This is like cheating, I'm not going to lie. Grab this guy really quickly as well. I'm going to go ahead and give him one as well. One thing I don't want him to do is to waste the KH-58 on one of the boats. You know, you don't need to do that, especially since we're dealing with such a powerful weapon already. Go ahead and add this guy right here. I believe the KH-58 is... Do it on certain MiG-25, Sukhoi-24s. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty confident this aircraft never actually carried this particular weapon. At the very least, you can get it in DHS, DCS, and that's uh, good enough for us. I'm going to add that guy right there. Grab the last one and go ahead and give him one too. And then we have to go back and tell them not to waste them, unless, of course, we have a target that's actually worthwhile to engage. Because they're just going to fire them at the boats, and they're going to completely waste them. They tend to be very wasteful in general in this game with anti-radiation missiles. There really needs to be more control over the weapon release authorization for them. So I'm going to go up to here, WRA. See it? Yeah, probably hasn't recognized it. Let's give it a second. Whoop! And they've already wasted almost every single one of them. See how fast they do that? <laughs> uh, let's see if I can find There it is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, manual attacks only. So unfortunately, I've just wasted probably half of these. Oh, that sucks. I was, I tried, I tried. So in DCS, um, you need to use the special hostile radar detection system, which we'll show off once we get there. It's really, really cool how it works. Now, these KH-58 missiles have a stupidly long range. Go ahead and grab one of them. I think it's 160 nautical, 130 nautical miles, which is insane. Uh, oh no, some of the Sukhois do, the later Sukhois do, and it looks like the Faxbet also has it, so one of the next 25, so I misspoke. Anyway, so those missiles are going to be launched, and hopefully they get there before, <laughs> look at that, before everybody else gets here. So anyway, uh, these aircraft are now ripping along at about 200 feet now, which is actually not what you want them to be doing. That's going to be so low, they won't actually be able to fire. There are uh, KH-29s, which I believe have a limitation here. Yeah, 650 feet. 
we do have to make them pop up a little bit. Pretty sure that's a hostile radar. So anyway, here comes the rain of uh, cruise missiles, basically, which are going to take half the fun away. It looks like there is an enemy radar. Anybody got a cage 58 left? Uh, save one just in case. So anyway, he's going to go ahead and pop that at that radar. Uh, knowing the Iranians is most likely a hawk. Um, are we able to identify it? No, we just know that it had a couple different radar systems, and we know that it's trying really, really hard to engage these. But um, we can see what, what's happened already is one of the ships got sunk by the cage 58 That's cool. I don't think we'll be able to get away with that in DCS. We'll try, but like I said, I don't think we'll be able to get away with that. So I'm guessing this is a hawk. Hawks are pretty nasty. In DCS, of course, the way to beat a hawk is you can kind of do like a corkscrew around it when it's coming flying at you, but it doesn't always work. So um, that's definitely going to be my bigger concern here. This is, is this an HQ-2. Does it have or a weapon? What's the minimum altitude of this guy? 1,000 feet. Okay, I can defeat that system. <laughs> that works. 950 feet. Okay, so we've defeated that system, which means we can probably spend the last guy on that one one more time, just in case the other one does fail. Weapon away. So right now, the Hawk battery is sitting there looking at that teeny, teeny, tiny blip going, I'm pretty sure that's coming for us, and they're working it out right now. Well, we've actually gotten a fix on it, but we're still not sure who it is. Lucky for us, we have an 850 doing a lot of our hard work for us today. Whoop, there they go. So he's definitely making an effort here. There's a bunch of different types of radars. That's one of the neat things about a lot of American surface air missile batteries, especially like the Nike and stuff like that, is um, they use multiple radar types, which makes it much, much tougher to jam and uh, effectively put out of action. But in this particular case, hopefully we get the one that actually counts, which is going to be the one that, of course, is indicating that target. Right, that Hawk battery is uh, panicking right now. Hawks, by the way, they tend to send a lot of them at once, and they're very fast missiles. Here comes another one. Nah, way too short. You n oh. oh no! <laughs> Guess what? We fired another one. Oh jeez, that happens. That happens. So what did he need? He needed a three to. Oh jeez. So that was actually pretty lucky. Unfortunately, the hawk is uh, wasting its time as my Sukhoi twenty five Ts get into range. And here we go. Any second now. Illuminating, and here comes the missiles. I have a feeling I'm about to lose that one. Uh, maybe not. I don't think you're going to be able to get it off in time. Oh, you tried. Bam. What do we get? We missed the par. Hmm. Interesting that we know what that is, even though we know what that is. Isn't that weird? Uh, we'll check something real quick now that our Sukhoi 25s are almost on target here. Got the par. What is the par? Target indicator. Okay, so that's one of the guidance uh, radars. Anyway, uh, two of these ships got shot down by the KH-58s, and now our frog feet come in, do the job. I'm going to order them to return to base. And notice the HQ-2 did not engage because it's below their minimum altitude for engagement. And it looks like we did put the Hawk out of action, which, um, why not, right? We're already here. Get our altitude back up to at least uh, 950 feet. We might as well go ahead and engage these guys real quick. Because I don't think they're going to be much of a threat for us as long as we stay low enough. Come on. The T model of the Frogfoot has such a tough time trying to arc. There goes one. There goes several more. And I'm not getting any angry comments from our buddy over at the Hawk Battery, so we could always take a look at him as well. I've got one KS, uh, uh, what is that? KH-29, I should say. Basically a Maverick. <laughs> that wasn't fair. Oh, and that battery's gone. Now we're going to go ahead and buzz Bender of us. Could use the 30mm cannon, but... Oh, that might not be a good idea. But hey, we're going to do it for fun. Let's go ahead and order them to uh, do ground tacking. And I'm going to have every single person in the group basically uh, queue up here and take a shot. Keep your altitude pretty low. There we go. Swinging around. Hopefully we can re-identify the Hawk battery. Come on, we got to be able to see it soon. 
We have a Cheval in the nose. I guess we're just up to... There he is. Hopefully these guys are all queuing up for their shots. Might have lost sight of them too long ago. And you guys are useless. <laughs> all right, let's send them home. They've done a good job today. Okay, let's see what happens in DCS. All right, we're sitting over here in uh, DCS, ready to go. You're probably wondering why we're at such a high altitude right here. Is that uh, when we were playing this over in command, you noticed that uh, we were at a much lower altitude. And as a matter of fact, um, we wouldn't normally be up here. We'd be much, much lower when we actually do our anti-ship strike. So the reason I'm all the way up here is I wanted to demonstrate the H-15. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the electro-optical, I should say, electrical intelligence pod. Electronic. And I'm going to go ahead and see what I can find here. And it looks like I've already spotted the Hawk. I'm going to missile battery. i locked it up with this weapon. Launch authorized. Look at that. I'm in range. That's probably about almost over 100 kilometers away, and I can go ahead and take the shot. Go ahead and fire that one. And a little more. And let's go ahead and get the other one of the radars there, the Hawk battery as well. And now let's go ahead and tell our teammates to go ahead and engage enemy air defenses also. Because my hope here is that they'll go ahead and... Uh, what I'm hoping is they'll go ahead and deploy their weapons as well before we get shot down by them. It's like a kind of a bad feeling. Oh, there they go. Ah, look at it. Look at that. Synchronized. You gotta admit that is pretty cool. Looks like our other buddy just did one of those. So let's go ahead and say flight. Go ahead and turn on the ECM. And let's also tell our flight to go ahead and uh, return the formation. Now, we're hoping that those weapons are able to destroy slash defeat the enemy systems before we get there. So uh, now we can go ahead and start getting ready for engaging our primary mission objective, which if you recall was to engage several ships. Now, the ships we're going to be dealing with, we've actually borrowed them from Georgia to make things a little bit more interesting. And we're going to have to be extremely careful when we engage these because we're going to be engaging these essentially by hand. The um, KH-25, it's not, I don't think it's a KH-25. It's um, definitely a 25 ML. I recognize that on the thing, but I forget exactly what model it is. But basically, it's a laser-guided weapon that you have to keep the laser on the target from your Cheval the whole time down, which makes it extremely, extremely challenging of a weapon to use, especially against a fast-moving target such as a ship. It's for whatever reason, the Cheval doesn't like to lock onto ships. I'm really crossing our fingers that things go well in that regard, because I have a feeling it can get pretty bad pretty quick. One of our teammates right there. Diving, we've got plenty of fuel for this bench. This thing is not nearly as fuel efficient as the A-10. There's a couple ships down there. But on the flip side, it'll uh, certainly get us there and back without too, too much concern. I think uh, bingo fuel today is something like uh, 1,100 kilograms, something like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip on our electronic intelligence system again. You can see we're still detecting their radars. That's because I have a feeling the cruise missiles haven't even got there yet. So, um, kind of interesting how that particular tool works. One of the cool things, too, with this is it'll actually pick up ship radars and highlight them for you. So if I turn my TV on, for example, um, let's see if I can spot one of those ship radars at this particular point. I think I'm just a little too far away to lock on. Hawks. I'm sure that's from uh, HQA or whatever it is. Get a little closer, I'm thinking. Pretty good speed here, so I'm not too, too concerned. We're almost to the target area. So, these particular weapons require you to keep a manual hand lock on them at all times. There it is, right there. See these two? If I actually lock onto this guy. There you go. You'll actually look at him on the TV. You can actually see, if you look extremely carefully, that's actually him all the way out there. So unfortunately, he's a bit of a distance away, so uh, not too, too concerned with him just, just yet. All right, all my buddies are ready to go. I wonder if they're in range. Yes. Apparently they think we're in range. Let's go ahead and go. About 10,000 feet is probably going to protect us from the sea was a little bit better than I'm just kind of zooming in there. And I'm looking, and I can physically see him. It is too bad we can't guide laser weapons with that particular tool, otherwise I completely would. 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, shut off that, which gives us access to our regular weapons. Here. And like I said, we're going to have to actually guide this sucker by hand, which is going to be kind of a problem. Especially since we only have a 10 kilometer range on these things. Oh man, I wish I had a Maverick right now. This would be 100% simpler. Sam watch, 11 o'clock. Excuse me. Just got to smack that Sam right into the ground. Find it. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Yeah, definitely true. Get into the ground. Nope. He made three on the flip side was the uh, winner of that particular weapon. Well, there's something is still looking right at me. Oh, I see it. Fortunately, our teammates were not able to disable those Sams. See it now? It hit the water. Uh, how can? See if I can get the hey! We got a search radar. Remember when we shot that missile like 20 minutes ago? <laughs> get a little lower here. This would never be a good idea because all the triple A of this city would be up and firing at me right now. Reacquire our targets though. We're here to get ships, not Sam's. Flip on our intelligence device here. Got most of it to be on the right, so this one. Go. Ah, there we go. That's going to be one of our targets on this guarantee. Yep. There he is. Flip on the laser. Yeah, he's just out of range. Laser off. Okay, so unfortunately, we're going to be steering this thing with our fingers. Which is, um. There's one right there. That looking at that. Yeah, hit the water. Alright teammates, where are you guys? Ah, oh, there's the target. Launch authorized. Alright, let's see if we can do it. Keep in mind, this guy has a very deadly sea whiz. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah! I'm about to get about a thousand tracers up at me in a second. This is not anything like the last time we did this in command. It's two. Neither one of those is for me. Let's take another shot at the ships. We definitely needed more support in this particular mission. In no way we've been able to do it on our own. Uh, it's not a target. Cannot see. There it is. Launch authorized. the sea was for some reason. Look around real quick. Oh, this is Dorian. Okay, that's better. I think the SA-2 ran out of the good stuff. I think we got in the minimum range there and it didn't engage. Alright, I see him. I don't... Sam's in. I'm still being locked on. Nah, they gave up, I think. 
Okay. Well, hopefully I have some teammates left after that. That was insane. Apparently I only have one teammate left. That's not so good. A kill. We'll go for the other one then. There we go. Missile. Look at them. Yep, those two hawks are for me. Missile. Maybe we can dodge high. both the missile and get a shot off at the same time. Find out. Come on. This is gonna be close. Launch authorized. I think he just shot at me. Come on. Come on. Seriously. This is not our day. That went crazy wide. How about our uh, Sam site there? We don't have fuel. All right, I got one on that wing. I got one on that wing. There's still two ships floating out there somewhere. We're gonna have to engage them at some point. So this is this is difficult. It's just not the right ship for this task, especially since you know we're Russia. We have some of the best anti-ship missiles on Earth. How many Sams I've had to get out of the way of so far? That one's got a pretty good fire on it, so it's probably a little less defended than its buddy there. Again. Launch authorized. So away. Come on. Come on. I don't have time for this. <sighs> Got him in the back. Go watch out for the hawk, though. Pretty clean it. No, that's not what was targeting me. It must have been the fire control radar on the ship that was going after me that time. He's a blaze. Bad. But he's still going on, though. Guess the Hawk ran out of ammunition. Oh, no. He's out of ammunition. Yeah, this has got to be a bust. Probably going to get one more hit in, and that's going to be it. Yeah, there's my buddy. Alright, I'm gonna try to get the guy on the far side. He's pretty ablaze right now. At least you can see in this direction. Launch authorized. Right on the waterline. Seriously? <laughs> That's it. Let's get out of here. All right, RTB. Uh, interesting. All right, so uh, that didn't quite go nearly as well as it did over in Command. Command, this is uh, relaxing. In uh, DCS, that was one of the most stressful ground attacks I think I've done in ages. I'd love to see how many SAMs were actually launched at me, and I'm guarantee you that Sea should have basically chopped me up into teeny tiny pieces. Must have been too busy targeting something else, and I lost my entire squad with the exception of uh, number four there. So uh, everybody, let's go ahead and uh, go back. Let's see what happened here.
So I'm not going to get credit for any kills here, which is unfortunate. Uh, actually, no, I forgot. I did actually... I remember right. I destroyed... Yes, I got those two, which is pretty good. And obviously, we did strike the ships and do quite a bit of damage to one of them. All right, hopefully you guys found that kind of enlightening. Um, I found that kind of stressful, <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't have to do it with the bombs. That would have been terrible. Enjoy.